Hello everybody, it's SOD Madhaven here today, and I wanted to talk about the two upcoming tanks that are going to be uh, dropping in Battlefront Season Pass, the Chrysler K and the Kriavets 1, the Kurt 1 is what I usually call it. So today's going to be a little bit of fun, I'm going to be telling you guys about two tanks that I think are amazing, um, Kriavets is actually one of my most played tanks in the game, I, I, uh, I have 679 matches inside of the Kriavets. I've put a lot of time into it. I'm rank 30 globally in this tank with the six, almost 700 matches I've invested inside the tank, and I absolutely adore it. Uh, unfortunately, on this list, uh, T28 Concept, an amazing tank. If we keep on going down a little ways, it's going to take a second to find it. Never mind, it's right there at 155 matches invested inside the uh, Chrysler K, 94 in the world out of 3,718 people inside this tank. Uh, global Unicom rating at 44, <laughs> 42. So, I mean, yeah, a lot of time invested inside this, and then, um, I'm really close to a gold mark, but I will say this, I will not gold mark it. I will drive into the crowd of people to get killed before I will ever gold mark a single tank. I think gold marks look like crap, and they take away from the design of the tank, and the best example I can give to, of, to you of that is this. The E75 with the Black Friday skin, you see the white and black design, the black and white design. The way that it looks, it stands out really, really well. And then the one thing that'll kick in and just completely to destroy the design of this would be gold marks, taking away from the aesthetics of this vehicle, which, in my opinion, would just not be fun. Also, let me know what you guys think about my garage. I've only designed the front portion of it so far. The entire back section is nice and blank, but each time I load in, uh, this is what I get to see. Anyways, jumping back to the Chrysler K, this is a tank that a lot of people, they don't really know how to play it, uh, per se. Um, I put a lot of time into this tank, and I, I gotta say, it's, in my opinion, one of the best tier 8s in the game. I mean, there's, I, I say that about a lot of them, but this one, by itself, you know, you may stand there and be like, 198 standard pin, 260 premium pin, it's not a whole lot, and that's one thing that really puts people off of this tank, is its penetration, and maybe even its mobility, or some people think that it's just, it feels a little bit weak in the front, but that there's not a whole lot you can do about that. And so now, starting off, let's go ahead and take a look at the armor viewer of this tank. And, I mean, starting off, you're kind of like, why is it all green? Well, I mean, this is 240 millimeters of effective armor on flat land, uh, 212 in the lower plate. Your insides are auto ricochet that are 82.6 millimeters thick. The under armor is 19.1, so it's real easy to overmatch underneath this tank if you are pulling up to reverse side scrape. Or, re yeah, reverse side scrape on, let's say, like a little bit of an incline on a hill. It's really easy to track out the uh, Chrysler K if you really wanted to. Or just get consistent damage because they exit the auto ricochet angle. If they're flat on, they're pretty easy to take on. Now, to give you an idea, this is versing the 113. So this is 249 standard pin. And then against heat, well, I think things just got a lot worse for this tank. But that is against 340 heat. Let's go ahead and max out the gun depression of this tank and take a look at what the armor looks like then. So now that we've entered the six degrees of maximum gun depression, I'm actually just going to go ahead and leave full screen real quick. Uh, this is now 300 millimeters of effective armor, along with the turret being 309, 307, uh, 270 up on the hatch, and then just really good armor. And then even against heat rounds, you're still looking at very decent armor, 347 down low. And then the insides here are still difficult to pin for tier 8s and some tier 9s. The hatch is 300 millimeters, so I mean, you're going to need some decent pin there. But if you start to flatten out, the hatch gets a little bit easier to pin, or if you're firing from up above, this tank is all about utilizing that maximum gun depression. Once you are in this position, you are extremely hard to dig out anywhere on the map. And the example gameplay that I have today for you is going to be really nice to see. So, let's go ahead and dive into it. 101.6 millimeters of side armor and a really decently thick turret at 254 with 241.3 in some areas, but either way, it doesn't matter. It's all about that haul down gameplay, right? Now, this replay is going to be taking place on Hidden Village? Did I get that right? I think I actually forgot the name of this map. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. This, this is a match that is really hard to deny especially once you see it start to go here. This position is one of my favorite to get into over on a D2, uh, really depending on the tank that I'm inside of. For instance, like the 113, um, even the Super Conk, the Valor, there's a couple of them. That if you get them in this position, they are extremely hard to tear out. This is a position that I find really good for auto ricochet tanks, um, which is 113, E75, TS. There's a couple of them that in this position is just makes them really hard to dig out. 
Now, in the time that I've played this tank, um, overmatching is something that I kind of focus on. Same thing about the 112 whenever I play that, or even the uh, Death Chariot as of re um, recent. I'm looking at the Torvagen B and thinking to myself, you know what? He's got really weak under armor. If he pulls up, I'm going to try and abuse that as much as I can. Now, the 260 premium pin on this tank, you got to remember there's a lot of tanks in game. There's the under armor overmatch right there. There's a couple of tanks in game. What was I talking about? I lost it. It's gone. I'll rewatch. I'll hear it and I'll be like, oh, well, I, I screwed up. Nope, we were talking about the 260 penetration. That's where we were. Yes, that's right. We're going to use my big brain and just laugh at it as much as we can. Now, I'm trying to remember if the gameplay audio is going off or not. I don't think it is, but now it should be. Um, the 260 penetration, that's APCR, it's not as good as AP at 260 because AP is going to readjust by 5 degrees while APCR is only going to be readjusting by 2 degrees on contact. So you do kind of have that little bit of a disadvantage with the 260. But 260 APCR is equivalent to about 248 AP. Um, that's the best comparison I can kind of give on that. Or I might be a little bit off. It might be like, rather than 248, it might be 242 in the range of there. Now, the caliber of the gun is 105 millimeters. And personally, I'm <laughs> super ecstatic that these things are coming out. We're already up to 2,000 damage dealt, 2350 blocked, which is um, one and a half times our health already. By this point in the fight and it's just this is a position where our lower plates cover it they can't exactly reach it each time they pull out it's going to be easy punishment they're pretty much just better off shooting he at us by this point in time and all i have to do is slowly find shots to lead them in i'm focusing out track assist as well uh up to 716 i do believe that it's track assist rather than spot assist now the chrysler k it does depend on the map that you were on how this tank is going to perform you might find yourself getting into some really, really strange positions on the map that are going to drive you a little bit insane, but that's just how it goes. You're going to get somewhere and you're going to think to yourself, why, why did I feel like this is a good idea to come here? Because it's so awkward to drive on. Half the rocks are made of butter, you swear, and it's just not fun. So far, this fight is down to 5 to 11. It is definitely not in our favor right now, but I'm currently still sitting at full health and none of these enemies are capable of going through my frontal armor just because against APCR that the Torvagen is shooting at me, my armor is actually about 30 to 40 millimeters thicker compared to if he was shooting... AP rounds. So that's kind of the best way to look at it. Now, in the time that I spent three marking the uh, Chrysler K, it wasn't really much of a challenge. I actually had a lot of fun playing this tank and it was really enjoyable learning how this tank was put together. And there we go, a little bit of overmatching on the roof of the Fatherland. That is a 30 millimeter top plate, so easy to go right through. Easy as cake. It's cutting through cake. Uh, <laughs> great example. Uh, five to seven so far, both teams have got artillery. That is another thing that this tank does suffer against. If artillery is aiming at you, you will find yourself in a lot of really awkward scenarios just because your top armor is only 40 millimeters thick and if they're splashing you on top, it's not, it, actually it's 38 millimeters of top armor. So 120 is gonna overmatch your top armor. Now, it, it's kind of like they hit you for, I don't know, 500, 600, and they're, they're going to set you on fire because your engine's located right in the front of this tank, and it, it's always the funnest part of the Kree Vets. Now, what's really nice about the Kree Vets is all of its ammunition is stored in the back of the tank. So if they shoot you in the sides, they're not going to hit your ammo rack ever. It's actually very rare that I get ammo racked inside my Kree Vets unless they shoot me in the back of the turret or they shoot me in the back of the hall itself because that's where all the ammo is located. So as long as you're keeping your butt protected, your ammo rack should be secure the entire time. Or you get rushed by a light tank autoloader and your top suddenly pops off within two shells because he went through your, your buttocks and had no issue doing so. Marking the map because I believe the light tank was going to be coming back there. And the rear armor of the Kree the, is 76 millimeters on the rear. That's actually really nice. Now, against the 703 here, I kind of wanted to try and find a position where I can utilize my gun depression, but unfortunately, this is a downslope, so it's playing against me a tad bit. Uh, depending on how this map is set up, this is actually one of the stronger positions to get into early game. Up to 4,768 dealt and 4,800 blocks. So far, it's trade for trade, and the trading is just specifically high, <laughs> high damage. They, they bounce off me, I pin them. 
And that's kind of how you want to try and play the Chrysler K. <laughs> Isn't that how you want to play any super heavy tank <laughs> to begin with? <laughs> now, the mo mobility of the Chrysler K, I wanted to say it's exactly the greatest at 35, but you're capable of maintaining that top speed without much of an issue due to your 20 horsepower to weight ratio. You have an extremely high power to weight ratio inside this tank. And there we go, the heat round from the 703. Now I'm kind of thinking I got to change up where I'm located. It's probably time that I rush in and get down into that bottom right position to help kind of prevent him from being able to pin me and put some pressure down on the four versus five scenario here. And especially since the enemy team is putting pressure on us with the base cap, we kind of have to do an equal amount of pressure on both ends of the team. Now for me, I did, I should have been a little bit more um, informative on this match to uh, my platoon mate Deathstroke because I was originally telling him you know, let's go ahead and push up, let's get this rush in. And the way that he thought I was talking about was move the dead artillery up with me as I'm getting shot from the left. And there we go, good decent shot in the panther there. It's all about trying to maintain the armor. I don't want to give him too much to be able to lose health. Coming around, we're gonna zoom in, take the time. There we go, straight through the gun mantle, it's a 260 pin. You only need 230 to go through the gun mantle, it's a 703. And Take the time. Unfortunately, I was taken down by the T-71DA whenever I should have been focusing on that tank instead of the 703, but I was kind of hoping the Tigers would have pushed up with us, but they kind of just stayed a little bit farther back, allowing me and Deathstroke to push up only and slowly be taken apart at the end of the game here. So, it happens. It, it's, you know, it, it's an occurrence, but sometimes you need to communicate a little bit better to get people on there and without being able to actually use any communications like a let's push icon in the game or whatever it is that you would like to use instead. A mastery badge, even though we lost inside this match, I'm up to 95.97. I'm keeping track of my damage standing. I'm currently in 97% at the end of the recording session that I was doing inside this tank. And I can definitely say that if I ever get close to that damage standing, I'm going to be throwing that tank to the fire and I'm going to be driving off a hill wondering why the team Ragnarok is not on the side of my tank, even though I put it there just a moment ago. There we go. Now now I'm happy. Now, now I can die in peace because this is the, the team Ragnarok tank. That's kind of the tank I was playing during that time and I didn't want to, but I was. Now, going over the crew for my Chrysler K, we're going to be looking at Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Rapid Aim, Steady Aim, Clutch Braking, Off-Road Driving, Track Mechanic, Sixth Sense, and Situational Awareness. Now, there is one perk I want to talk about in particular. Sixth Sense is one of the most powerful perks in the game, and I don't see people using it inside of the public queues, and you have no idea how much that irritates me to see that people aren't using this perk. I... Seriously, if you're not using this perk, um, I think you might be a little bit brain dead from Cold War, or maybe someone saying that it's a useless one. You don't want to use this. Sure, if you don't, don't want to play the game correctly and you don't want to know how to maneuver properly, then please don't use Sixth Sense. But let me explain this to you. I am currently not spotted inside this match, okay? Which means no one's going to be targeting me. Now, the second you are targeted, it tells you, even though I fired, I'm still not detected, which means I'm safe to stay out there. I am now spotted. Six Sense has now gone off. The next thing you need to see is the, um, what was it? The targeted indicator? Is that what they call it now? Whenever someone aims at you, it's going to pop up with a target indicator. At this exact moment, now you see the exclamation point. This means... You are detected, and someone is now aiming at you. The amount of advantage that gives you is tremendous. You have no idea. I've had multiple blind shots in the game because of Sixth Sense. The reason why is because you use that detected indicator whenever you're pulling a corner to give you an idea if someone is aiming at you. It's the reason why I don't aim at enemies unless I'm spotted or unless I'm there to actually consistently deal damage. If I'm trying to bait somebody to come out, I don't want them to know that I can aim at them, so I look away. It's a falsified strategy. It's basically a um, look away and bait strategy, I guess is the best way to look at it, because they're going to come out thinking he's not aiming at me yet, and then they're fully exposed. Now you aim at them, and then you fire, guaranteeing a penetration because they're targeted indicator never properly went off. Sixth Sense is one of the strongest perks in the game, and I think it's ridiculous that I don't see people using it.
Now for the equipment loadout on this tank, it's very basic. It is optics, uh, advanced loader. I got to double check that. Yes, advanced loader combined with improved ventilation. Um, this is a very simple loadout. It gets to reload this tank down to 6.7 seconds. Here inside the menus, it's 6.8 seconds, but inside the game is 6.7 because they don't like to round off that final number for whatever reason. Anyways, up next, we're going to be taking a look at the Kree events. We're going to be going over the crew first and the equipment that I use in this tank next. Uh, for me, this is actually one of my favorite tanks in the game. It's a really good silver grinding tank. I I play it just to have high mobility and a really decent gun, and especially when we get the high roll for 440s out there. Speaking of which, the WZ-111 that was recently buffed is absolutely nasty in a lot of ways. <laughs> a video coming up on that one pretty soon, more than likely, just because I've had multiple 5,000 plus damage games inside there since they finally redid the penetration on it to 196 from 175. Anyways, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, snapshot, off-road driving, clutch braking, situational awareness, six sense, and track mechanic. A really simple heavy tank crew loadout and a lot of fun. Uh, Equipment-wise, we're looking at improved optics it's advanced optics uh power terrain and then improved ventilation as i'm gonna have a massive brain fart honestly this tank speaks for itself because i've already seen the 703 review um this tank is pretty much the exact same way with a weaker turret at 195 rather than 230 but it doesn't take anything from this tank it is still extremely powerful and a lot of fun and you can kind of see the context here team hurricane even the emblem on the side of this uh yeah all these tanks that are being shown off for this season are tanks that i ran during the um four team battles so lots of fun there so the next batch is on Kasserine. honestly this is a map that i've been changing up the way that i play it i used to do a lot of rushes going over into f seven f6 around that area fighting on top of the hill but as of recent i've been changing it up a tad bit I did have two matches inside of the um, Chrysler K. The second one was on this map, and I kind of didn't want to, you know, feature the same map twice, so I changed it up a little bit. And that's because we ended up on the Kree events inside this map instead, so rather than showing out the map twice, while the Chrysler K in this map, it was against tier 10s, I still dealt uh, 4,400 damage more. I'll probably just show up the statistics of that match after this one so you guys can see it. But. I've changed up the way that I play this map a little bit. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump forward a little bit because that you know how big this map is. Alright, so here we are arriving in D4. This is a very simple position. It's a lot of sniping and a lot of utilizing, you know, maximum gun depression and <laughs> hoping you don't get hit by the 276 standard pin from the E3 and the, honest to God, the number I've forgotten how much penetration it's got in this premium round even though I play it quite a bit. But I'm just up here to spot, really. I'm not there to do a lot of damage, I'm only up here to really get some targets out and maybe every once in a while uh, get a shot out into the Iron Rain. But since I'm right here, I'm able to spot targets from down there because it's 380 meters for how far that they're located. And my view range, even though it's not the greatest of 471, it's still enough to be able to catch them out off in the distance there. Speaking of which, your base view range inside this tank, I do believe, is 360. So it is kind of a requirement to take optics and situational awareness on this tank. I don't recommend to do it without it. There are some tanks I would recommend to drop optics. And if you wanted to, you could even drop um, situational awareness to help you get some extra gun handling perks or maybe even extra couple survivability perks. It's completely up to you, though. But in this match inside the Kree events, I don't advise it. Not to mention everyone that uses armor angling and all the damage negation ones. It's like if you're expecting to take damage, then please be my guest and use those. But if you're not expecting to take damage and you're expecting to play your super heavies correctly, then drop it. I don't see the value in it because 10% damage reduction is 10% damage reduction to damage that is dealt. But if you block the damage, there was no damage reduction needed in the first place. So uh, there's that logic. Anyways, if you find high explosives to be annoying, uh, just run a spa liner. Uh, probably over the next couple of days, I'm going to be running some tests on the spa liner. Um, I might get a hold of Slap Fish and see if he wants to run a couple tests with spa liners and have people side by side and direct impact splash them with Averys and, you know, the absolute most ridiculous tank in the game, the AVRE, which just, yeah, we, we all love the high explosive spam that's going on in the game currently. We all love it. It's uh, HE hell nonstop, and uh, we, we all appreciate it, especially with the new tanks coming out. I mean, not a single one of them are HE spam. Thank God. I was expecting them to bring in like a Bison T-103 that 
had like a 152 millimeter derp gun that did 1200 damage in tier 8, but at least we didn't see that. Uh, please don't take that as a please let's do that. I do pull up a little bit too far here. I take a shot in the left from I believe it might have been Scorpion, maybe not based upon the damage that was dealt. There's a Death Star down low, so far up to 1170 blocked. And all I see, the Kree of its turret, it's amazing. Even though you see 195, it's got some really good angles all around it. And it's got auto ricochet all along the roof deck of the tank, except for the 50mm um, uh, housing on top of the tank. It's the forehead of it. And there we go, the Arachnid pulling out. Now, this match, it wasn't exactly the greatest match. This is just one that came to mind. It was one of the matches I played during the time, and I didn't have a whole lot of time to play my Kree of its today, so I only put in, I believe four matches and this was the best outcome a lot of them were against tier tens unfortunately but it, that's how it goes 780 let's go ahead and pull up take a shot here and there we go beautiful lower plate he gave us that entire thing just propped it on up and he just he essentially flashed us he decided to pull up a shirt and show us all of his goodies and i just decided to take full advantage of that and here we go again. Unfortunately, that time I was scared of the 267 AP pin that he has. Now, for the Kree events, uh, personally, I don't mind APCR, but I'm a real big fan of AP. Just because AP read just by 5 degrees, uh, it, it's in my opinion, it's a better round in APCR. Even though it has a higher pin in some scenarios, I still prefer my AP uh, more than I do APCR. Just because you get some easier shots off that way in some targets. And there we go. Just uh, absolute panic attack on my end. <laughs> that arachnid, I didn't want to go up against him in the slightest. He was putting a lot of pressure on me, and I just, I was like, oh, is he finally dropping? Let's pull up. Let's pull up. There we go. And we have one. There we go. Three, two, 374 damage. A lot of low rolls inside this tank, however. Um, I kind of feel like I low roll a lot more than I high roll inside this thing, but with the reload at 8.9 seconds with the premium consumable and the 9.7. I believe is what it is with um, uh, the advanced loader equipped, but I'm not using an advanced loader. Honestly, I know without without advanced loader, it's 9.7, so 9.6, 9.7 with the uh, round off. And honestly, that is the same reload as the E75 TS with a gun rammer. So yes, I'm still going to be mentioning this. 360 Alpha guns they suffer compared to 122 390s, even though most 360 Alpha guns are 105s. So, it confuses me why they have the same reload. I was kind of hoping that he was on reload <laughs> at this moment, but in fact, he's not. He's actually got a really fast reload. Um, I have to double check what the Arachnid's reload is because I can't remember off the top of my head. I was sitting there like, maybe 20 seconds? That sounds about right. You know, I was kind of hoping 20 seconds, but unfortunately, I was completely wrong. Anyways, MVP, 2,855 dealt, 11 direct hits, and... Uh, what was the assisted? I went a little bit too fast. 1,584. That's not bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other match I had inside the uh, Chrysler K. As you can see, same positioning. We're going to get some shots in the 257. Absolutely punishing him, using a lot more premium ammunition inside this match than inside the last one. Victory with 4,465 damage dealt. Uh, two kills. Uh, BMOH being shown off with 1,635 assisted and 1,630 blocked mastery badge and uh, 60 uh, 96.4. So I'm getting rid of just completely driving the open and die inside this tank because honestly, I, I just don't appreciate gold marks. They look like crap. Anyways, you guys, hopefully looking at these uh, replays, it gives you a little bit of ideas how to play these tanks once you get your hands on them. The Chrysler K is an absolute menace on the battlefield and is extremely hard to penetrate until artillery decides to say, hello, how are you today? We're just going to nuke the absolute crap out of you because you're hauled down and none of our tanks can pin you, not even our tier 10s. Now, before we're done with this, there is one last thing that I'm going to show off. It's how to pin the um, Chrysler K if it's hauled down and you're struggling to do so. If you made it to the end of the video, good for you. You're going to learn something nice. Now, whenever you're hauled down against this tank and he is giving you a lot of trouble, if he ever looks away, the inside of the gun here is 256 millimeters of armor. Now, sure, some of you are probably sitting there like, that's 256. My standard pin will never go through that. If you have high enough APCR penetration, which is really specific, it's APCR, for instance, tier 9s, tier 10s with the standard rounds, um, a select amount of tier 8 premiums, E75TS, T34, 
Uh, even the T32 can penetrate this. A couple of them have 260 or higher penetration. You will be able to go through the gun mantle of the Chrysler K. Other than that, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Um, yeah, this is about it for me. I, en I, en I, en I enjoyed playing these matches inside these tanks. Honestly, Chrysler K is amazing. Korea Vets is one of my favorite tanks. It turned into a test tank after I three marked it. And the Chrysler K hasn't yet. But more than likely, I'm going to be tearing this apart and putting on nothing but speed equipment and kind of hoping that doesn't kill me nonstop because that's kind of what I'm expecting. Anyways, until next time. You guys, I'm out of here.